Hello, and welcome to this short tutorial video highlighting the API 579 Part 9 Level 1 Assessment in Inspect. Today I'm going to go through a very simple example to show you how to use this feature. As you see in front of you, I have a vessel, and I've modeled a crack on this cylinder right here. So you can see that there will be a visual representation of the flaw when you model them on the models. But today I'm going to make a simpler model. I'm just going to look at a cylinder. So I'm simply going to come up to my file menu, select new, and we'll select a division one vessel. To begin to analyze a crack, we first need the component that the crack is located on. So in our case, we're just going to take a simple cylinder just to show you this feature. So I'll simply select cylinder on the right here, and I'll just change some orientations like so, and I'll right click on it and make some edits to it. So we're going to assume it's a 516 grade 70 material, and it's been designed to 300 PSI at 650 with no external pressure on it. And we'll assume that the vessel was post well heat treated as well. And I'll just set my diameters and length here as well. And the fabricated thickness was one and a quarter inch thick. I can click OK. And there's my model. Now one other thing I want to do is I actually want to change the code here. So down the bottom right hand corner I can select the 2017, right click on it, and I can select in our case the 2006 addenda for example. So if you need to go back to when the equipment was originally built, you can select that and inspect. Now that the model is set up, now we just simply add our flow over top of it. So simply come up to the API 579 menu and select Part 9 Crack Life Flow Level 1 Analysis. And this is the dialog. Now as many of you know, cracks can be introduced during fabrication or later during operation. So being able to have a level one assessment tool available is key to making sure the equipment can safely run. Uh, the part nine level one is a very conservative screening assessment so that we can make the decision to keep the equipment operating or to possibly do a level two assessment, which is available in inspect as well. But let's go through the dialogue. So as you can see at the top here, we have the identifier. And we can also specify a GPS location as well. Once that's completed, we then locate the flaw. So in our case, it's located on the cylinder, and then we simply enter in the offset of the flaw, in our case on the bottom seam, but you can also go from the datum or top seam. And I'll just put this halfway up the cylinder, and we'll leave it at zero degrees because it's located on that longitudinal seam. Next would be the measured flaw length. This is the two CM value see here. I'll just type in our value, and then our measured flaw depth, which is going to be a quarter of an inch. Now the assessment temperature and the assessment pressure will be dependent on your operating conditions. So in our case it's going to be 100 degrees Fahrenheit at 140 PSI. Now the distance of major structural discontinuity, we just need to make sure that we're away from things like cone cylinder junctures, vacuum rings, nozzles. So we'll just type in a value of 60 for this demonstration. And then there'll be inputs for your corrosion, so your loss to date. We'll put in 0.1 and our future corrosion allowance will be an eighth of an inch. Now if the flaw is not oriented in a principal plane, what you can do is simply check this option and enter in the angle. Conversely, if it's not normal to the surface, you can select this option and put in the angle. Inspect will determine the equivalent flaw length for you for the assessment to be used. Now at the bottom there's some information pertaining to where the flaw is located and the flaw type. So the location of the flaw, it's in a weld seam, the flaw type, it can either be in the surface or embedded in the surface location. It can either be inside, outside, or through wall. And then in terms of longitude or the weld seam, it's in the longitudinal seam and it's parallel to the seam as well. So that's it. That's all the information we need to do to set up this flaw. So when we click OK, you can see that the flaw has been modeled here. So I can zoom in on my flaw like so. And you can see the little stitch mark representing our flaw. I'll just zoom out here, like so. Now let's go ahead and run the report. To do that, we can simply come up to the action menu and select perform code calculations, or you can press the F3 function key on your keyboard. Coming into the report here, you'll see a new report for crack like flaw number one. That's the name we gave to the identifier. Select it, 
and we can go through the report. Now, the reports are similar to all other reports you'll find in Inspect. Everything is intuitively laid out, and all calculations are listed below. Now, at the top here, you'll see a result summary where we'll, you'll see a geometry check, material check, and permissible crack flaw length and the crack like flaw length check as well. If any of these are unacceptable, you can simply select the hyperlink and go to that section. But a couple things to note when we're doing the crack like flaw assessment is that all the parts from part nine are satisfied. So there's going to be a geometry check you can see right here. There's a material check. And very importantly, there is a brittle fracture check as well performed. And then down below, you'll see the permissible crack flaw length chart as well. So the chart will actually be detailed here for you so you can see where your permissible crack length is in relation to your actual crack length. So you can also use to say, well, we might be getting close to the line. Perhaps we do want to go and perform a level two assessment, which you can do through the FEA engine available in inspect as well. Switching back to the model, we simply click on the HTML report and you're back at the model and you can make any changes that you wish. So that's it. That's how we set up a crack like flaw assessment in inspect. It's a very easy, intuitive dialogue and will help you out in the field making your decisions. I'd like to thank you very much. Have a great day.